Will Earl Spence Jr. duck Jerron Boots Ennis after lackluster fight? Javante Davis KOs Ryan Garcia. Here's why. What's good, everybody? It's your boy Cardinal Red, Cardinal Red Sports, straight out of Louisville, Kentucky. Let's talk about it. All right, so this past weekend, Jerron Boots Ennis had a pretty decent performance in my eyes versus Karen. <laughs> I won't try to say his last name, but uh, we'll just call him Karen for the rest of the video. So he fought Karen, and Karen. He put up a, a style of fight that was very difficult for Jerron Boots Ennis to take advantage of. He did a lot of ring movement, and he didn't stop. He stayed on that bike for the whole fight. He used his endurance to his advantage. And I think, you know, once again, that he watched some Boots footage and realized that Boots has a very high knockout ratio. And his team came up with a good game plan for him not to get knocked out. Still lost the fight, but didn't get knocked out. And that brings up the question because a lot of people, I think, felt like Boots should have got dude out of there. Whether it was early or late, he should have got dude out of there. It should have been a knockout in that fight. And I think a lot of people, for the same reason, if Terrence Crawford wouldn't have got a knockout versus David Anise, that I think a lot of people would have chewed him up for that. And you can say the same thing about Boots, that people have already been picking at his level of competition, and when you put him in there with a guy that everybody feels like you should beat hands down and knock him out hands down and you don't, then they start to doubt your skill sets. But I think what you have to do is, is re realize that boxing is a sport. You know, both sides come in with game plans. Uh, Karen was a seasoned veteran. So there's no way he came into this looking to get knocked out and to pad Boots' knockout ratio. And I'm pretty sure he, he's young enough to where he wants to extend his career a little bit. I'm pretty sure he was getting one of the biggest paydays of his career. And he realized, and his team realized, we're going to use this as an opportunity uh, to get seen and perhaps get another fight. So, you know... You know, take that fight for what it is. Boots did what he was supposed to do, and he did what he could at the same time. And he got another victory. But it brings up the question after all of that being said, will Earl Spence duck Boots now because Boots might have shown some vulnerability? Is it better for Earl Spence to go after Boots now, or will Earl Spence still pursue the... Keith Thurman fight that has already been placed in front of him because we all know that those are the two fights he has to choose from next because of the Virgil Ortiz standing on his situation so will will Earl Spence take the Karen fight as this guy isn't as good as people say he is and I think I found a chink in his armor and I'm gonna go ahead and take him on and get that that good young name so I can say I beat that good young name and have that on my record before I exit the welterweight division? Or will he go ahead and let PBC have their way with the Keith Thurman fight and the easier fight to make? I Actually, I take that I take that part back because both fights would be easy to make because uh, Boots is on Showtime and Showtime's a direct partner with PBC. So they would both be easy to make, but what would be the tougher fight? in Earl Spence's eyes and mine now based off of what we saw in the fight Saturday night with Boots and Curran. If it was one thing that I would take away from that fight if I'm Earl Spence as a chink in Boots' armor, I would have to say that Boots is susceptible to swinging. And I think Boots was seeing some open opportunities, but because dude is so quick and has such a high motor he wasn't able to capitalize all the time on those opportunities because Kern would just get on that bike and cycle right out of the way <laughs> so you know if it's one thing Earl Spence can take away is that Boots is susceptible to swinging at times he shouldn't be swinging and maybe that's something Earl Spence can take advantage of Y'all let me know what y'all think about that down in the comment section below. Why Javante Davis KOs Ryan Garcia? 
Easy work. <laughs> Man, you know, that was a spectacular fight card. I have to reiterate that one more time on, on behalf of Showtime. They put up a great fight card, powerhouse fight card, what you want to see in boxing from here on out. Because when, when boxing has these long, you know, long fight cards and, they're, and it's filled with nobodies, and the only fight that gets you excited is the main event, and you waited five hours for that. Half the time, a lot of people have fell asleep by the time the main event comes on. But when you have a powerhouse card like that, and it's action-packed throughout, you had fights where you thought one guy was going to win, and the, and the other guy won. You had great fights where uh, one guy, you know, we got to see some boxing skill on the display with the Jerian Ennis versus Kern fight. And then you had that superstar fight. You got to see Javante Davis do it in spectacular fashion. And the one thing I'll take away from that fight about Javante Davis and why I feel like he would KO Ryan Garcia on some easy work is the fact that Javante Davis, unlike most fighters, he has to be one of the most patient fighters I've ever seen. And patience is the key to any sport. In basketball, you have to have a point guard that is patient. He has to wait for the offense to set up, and then he has to attack at the right moment. In football, your quarterback, he has to control the pace of the game. He has to be patient, wait for the receivers to get open, and let the, uh, the line block for him and make holes. And in boxing, you have to be patient, counterattack, or you have to be overly aggressive to overwhelm your opponent and most fighters are just overly aggressive and overwhelm their opponent javante davis outthinks his opponent and he does that with power which is scary imagine a thanking mike tyson imagine what that would be a thanking mike tyson would a thanking mike tyson might still be active today if a mike tyson was a thinking boxer, was a plotting boxer, and you and, and actually use what people call boxing skills, you know, even though all fighters are boxers, but it, those orthodox boxing skills instead of more of the brawler skills, Mike Tyson would most likely still be active today because he would have most likely knocked everybody out within four or five rounds and would have never had so much wear and tear on his body. But because he was such a brawler, mover, shaker type of uh, fighter, and he did take some, some punches during his career, some good punches, you know, that gave Mike Tyson a short-lived career, I think, in my eyes. I think Javante Davis, the one thing you're gonna, we're going to find out about Javante Davis, he might be the closest thing to Manny Pacquiao that we've seen. And, and you can quote me on that, saying that Manny Pacquiao was amazing because he was able to go through all those weight divisions. The power that Javante Davis is showing at 135, I think, could translate up to 147. Now, he is pretty short. How he would deal with the length of the 147 fighters would, would be his thing. But Manny Pacquiao was able to do it, and I think he would actually be able to do it as well. Now... One more thing I want to say about the fact that he's a thinking man's fighter is longevity. Longevity. If he's able to do this over the span of his career where he's not really taking a lot of damage, he's going to have a long career. That's the one problem with a lot of fighters. Earl Spence Jr.'s career is probably going to get cut short because of the car accident is eventually going to catch up with him. Terrence Crawford, he, he's taking some damage in some fights. Javante Davis hasn't really taken a lot of damage, and he's delivered a lot of damage. So, whether he decides to retire early because he's made that much money, or if he decides to stay in boxing for a long time, if he keeps going at this ratio, he's going to have a long, long career. And I think that's why he's going to end up knocking out Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia is a speed style of fighter. Ryan Garcia... I think relies a lot more on what he calls boxing ability. But a thinking man's puncher is going to beat a boxer every day of the week. Not just six days out of the week, but every day of the week because of the power. 
and the, his ability to think before throwing shots. Y'all let me know what y'all think about that down in the comment section below. Hit that like button for me. Sure, sure, sure. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. If you want to collabo, flockofcards at gmail.com. Hit me up on Twitter as well, and we are out of here.